This is TV Black Box, bringing you the inside goss from the TV industry. Well, it was an emotional night tonight on Big Brother. As we said, farewell to Farmer Dave and the one and only Farmer Dave joins me now. Welcome to TV Black Box, Farmer Dave. I wish it was under better circumstances. (laughs) Thanks, mate. Uh, Long time listener, first time caller. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank you very much. Um, (laughs) Dave, I think we have to uh, talk about the elephant in the room. You're not a very good strategist, are you, mate? (laughs) Look, I did not... You know, in all the media stuff that I'm doing, they keep saying, you know, what was the strategy going into the house? And I'm like, I didn't have one. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's you're going obvious. into North Korea. Like when anyone goes to North Korea, do you have a strategy? You just want to survive. Um, <laughs> you want to connect with people. And, you know, for me, uh, tell my rough track story and, and try and um, promote uh, the incredible alternative um, model that we have um, to keep kids out of prison. So, yeah, I didn't really have a strategy when it came to the game. Um, mate, I, I have to say, you I can only imagine what you were feeling when you put Trevor and he was evicted. Um, a, th- a million sorries isn't going to make you feel better, is it? <laughs> yeah, no. But, look, it's, it's worked out. Look, the, the maze, look, okay, so few things going on there. One, you know, I was going to put up Brenton and how crazy is that, that he's the one that ended up uh, putting me up to, to be yeah. a victim. So, you know, you can't write this stuff. I don't care what anyone says. Um, I've done a lot of reality TV and it is what it is. You know, you yeah. don't have these producers constantly telling you what to do. It, it, in my experience, um, reality TV is uh, so incredible because you can't write this stuff. You really can't write um, the whole, you know, Tully coming in late because of COVID and Drew already having another girlfriend. You know, you can't write all of the, the stuff that, that went on this series. But, um, yeah, I suppose I, I leaned on uh, my other OGs for advice on who to put up and, you know, it was like, well, let's put up Safe as Houses Trev. Um, <laughs> you know, I was playing my own game and of course the whole whole time and uh i thought oh yeah you know that's fair and then i thought well i'll put up all the all the respected housemates and it'll just be a straightforward alicia's gonna gonna go but then i didn't realize that um all my housemates uh were like yeah yeah we love trev but he's gotta go it's like what what (laughs) but it worked out good for him because he got his amazing job on radio and he's killing it and uh, it just really worked out. And had he not been evicted at that time, um, he probably wouldn't have got that amazing job and, and uh, that's what really? I was like. Yeah, so it worked out really good. I mean, you know, he, he, he was uh, working at a pretty low-paid job at the radio station. There was an opportunity for him to get this really good job and I thought, look, I'll give him some airtime. Of course he's not going to go and that'll really allow him to shine to be able to get that job. And um, But... As it turned out, um, it was his eviction that allowed him to get out and then get that job right in that period. So, oh, I did not work. know that. That's awesome. Um, mm. And it's interesting what led to that, though. Tim seemed to be reveling in trying to control the evictions, and he was egging you on to make a big play. He's like, I'm not going to be the one doing it. Dave, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it, it, it's. The only thing that annoys me about the whole thing is, you know, to win that um, that challenge was amazing and I could have stayed yeah. there for hours and hours and hours and um, and I suppose I lost that uh, amazing, um, I suppose, narrative of winning the challenge. I mean, I'm a 42-year-old man. I um, have broken most of my body uh either riding bulls or riding horses and motorbikes and rolling utes and jumping out of aeroplanes and just being very cruel to my temple. So, you know, I didn't think that I could have won any of the challenges, but I I won that challenge and then to have it all go absolutely pear-shaped kind of sucked. But, you know, Tim is, he's born and bred for the Big Brother universe. He is perfect at the game and he, you know, he was playing the orchestra and he was an amazing conductor. He's still, <laughs> he's still amazing in there. He's like the puppet master. Um, you, though, when you leaving, and, and Tim was veering away from the OGs, but I will tell you in the next episodes, he has a lot of remorse and 
you leaving him, you leaving the house hits him hard. And I'm not, I, I'm not spoiling anything. Uh, this will play out, and I'm not giving away any major spoilers, but um, it does hit him hard and makes him reevaluate his game. Actually, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, look. Uh... We're very close. We're very similar, extremely different. But uh, you know, he's a he's a, um, a disability support worker. I'm a I'm a youth worker. So we're both in the social work space, and we've both been through some really hard, difficult times with um with our our cultures and, and our own understanding of self. So we have similar journeys, and we we have a real um understanding of each other. Mm. But dichotomy when it comes to playing the Big Brother game, that's for sure. Uh, do you did you find it hard in the house with Tim getting overexcited about <laughs> his his ability to manipulate the house and you know he 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 turned on people but he was sort of not turning on people did the friendship get strained in there there was a moment that you looked like Tim we're mates it's okay you know <laughs> like I I felt like that you was the daily conversation. <laughs> <laughs> daily conversation to remind him that I've always got his back no yeah. matter what. And, and uh, look, you know, Tim's playing his own game. He's very much so. He entered the house alone. He was going to exit the house alone, whichever way that was going to uh, pan out. And um, it would have been good to have been playing on the same team more often, but yeah. hats off to him because goodness me, doesn't he give amazing entertainment and amazing engagement and you don't know which way he's going to go and that's what you need in the big brother game you know mm. people like me that you're like you know exactly what they're going to do because of the relationships that they've formed um we can tend to be a little bit boring so you know at least <laughs> spicy uh when when you were in the house the original time round, yep. it was going out to where while you were in there so you didn't really see the impact this time is different on the Channel 7 season. You shoot the whole thing and then you get to watch it play out on air. How different is that and how much have you learned by watching it as each episode goes to air? It's, yeah, it's totally different. Like, uh, you know, last time it was it was huge. You know, remember the Prime Minister weighed in, um, the Deputy <laughs> Prime Minister weighed in, um, religious leaders weighed in, and it was wall-to-wall Big Brother. The year that I was on, 2006, uh, I think, you know, Big Brother started at like 6.30 and went all the way through until the wee hours of the morning. There was show mm. after show and spin-off shows. Um, oh, mate, I used to watch the live feed. I would see li- you go. The live feed. I loved the live feed back in the day yep. and I would watch you guys just talking crap and I loved it. I missed the live feed, actually. So it was it was huge and it was all pervasive back then and millions upon millions of people tuned in. So then, you know, when you got out of the house... Um, there was no way to understand what people had experienced. For me, it was just I was living in a flatmate situation with people on the Gold Coast and then I went back to my farm. But every time I went to the city, you would be mobbed. Um, <laughs> I couldn't go anywhere at all or eat anything um, at all at any any place where there was people because people just needed photographs, autographs. They just wanted to meet you. They wanted to talk to you. They wanted to share that we should be best friends. And that went on for like a dozen years. But it's so, still going on. You were in Dancing with, with the Stars. And, yes. you know, people, my daughter um, is, is 15. She is heartbroken that you've gone. We watched the episodes together and yep. – she keeps trying to get spoilers out of me about what's coming up, Dad. What's and I'm like, no, I'm not telling you. Um, but she watches the episodes with me, and she was in tears when you left, mate. And and so you're even having an impact on people who didn't see you in the original Big Brother. Oh, that's yeah, that's that means that means a lot. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. But um, yeah, it it was huge. It was huge back then. But I I never really grasped it. I never really understood it. And it wasn't um. It wasn't until actually listening to your podcast and uh, you were doing it with Big Brother, I'm like, oh, I can watch that on the app now because because I just don't have a TV. I've, I've not owned a, a TV, so I was able to watch on the app and I got really into it. And then I thought I should I should watch my series. So last year um, during COVID, I watched my series and I got what people were on about, and I I understood this vulnerable kid who was just being really raw and showing the whole world, who, who he was and, and living that whole experience in such a unique uh, arena. 
And it was kind of like watching, you know, my kid or my little little brother or something or other because I was mm. echo understanding that I was there but not really. Um, but this time around is totally different because, you know, we filmed it a while back and, and now I get to watch it and experience it. And I, I'm experiencing it every day with the Rough Track kids. You know, we, we have circle work in the morning and they all talk about what happened in the show last <laughs> night. <laughs> it, it's really cool, but it's such a family orientated show. And my mm. own kids, you know, my little kids um, that are spread around Australia, they get to watch it. And it's such a cool experience to be able to do the, the two, you know, back when it was just massive and epic and everywhere and people would just go crazy when they saw you to now where it's family friendly, it's fun and people are a lot more respectful um, about it all now and uh, it's not so um, intense. I think we've learned a lot via social media not to um, – it's, it's – it's just a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing, Dave. So is that the first time you've watched your original series? Yeah, yeah. Last year was the first time I'd, I'd watched it. So um, so I'd never, never, never seen an episode. So didn't know what it was all about. That's amazing. Uh, mm. I have to ask you about Reggie um, <laughs> because uh, people described you as a power couple. They're like, um, <laughs> Drew and Sam, we call them a power couple, but... Dave and Reggie are a power couple and no one talks about it. Um, there is a deep love between you two, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Look, she was my housewife. I was her house husband. We were, we were like, <laughs> we were like an old Iowa couple who had, <laughs> you know, ended up in Las Vegas and we had our buys <laughs> our, and our fanny packs and we're just walking around the casino and everyone's madly gambling and trying to trying to get their win after loss after loss and all desperate and we're just like oh this is great <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know we're both similar you know i'm a queenslander she lives in queensland we're um we're just aussie larrikins that um had a lot in common as parents and we you know are very chilled about the stresses we don't really we don't really mind what we say and we don't mind what others think about us and and that was just cool to be in that situation with someone so like-minded and uh just so raw authentic and real mm. she's a beautiful person um she's still in the game uh, yeah. do you think she'll be okay without you she you, you leaving has hit her hard too yeah, look, I got a lot of guarantees from people to look after her and to to not vote her. And um, I, I really, really put the waterworks on a lot of people. Pressure will <laughs> vote her out. You know, you've got no opportunity at the end. You've got to keep her in there. And I, I did that with uh, most of the housemates. Um, but yeah, look, I was I was spent, and I felt that you know Reggie had a had a solid place moving forward, and I didn't need to be a guide dog anymore. She'd really come into her own, and she was, um, you know, she's a strong, strong woman. She's been through so much, and mm. uh, she can handle it moving forward. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, uh, your nomination was very funny because I'd never seen you so assertive in the nomination room and you're saying, I can't imagine this person being there at the end. And and, and I'm like, this isn't like that. He's choosing between two people he loves. And I'm, I was there confused going, it can't be, this doesn't make sense. And, of course, you were talking about yourself and I thought that was such a lovely moment. Um the bugger yeah. wouldn't let me do it. I thought I'd read the rules <laughs> that many times through the day, and I'm like, "Yeah, I've got this. This is this is so easy. I've got this worked out." And he's like, "No, I do that." And it's like, "Oh, I forgot. We're in North Korea, and you're Kim Jong Un." <laughs> <laughs> um, before I let you go, the house. How different is it uh, from now to back then? Uh, it's kind of like um, visiting your old school, you know. So much is the same, yet so much is different. You know, the new modern version really lacks the the fun of the Friday night games. Yes, it it lacks uh, a lot of the, um, I suppose, the slow reveal. You know, the unpeeling of the onion because you know, in the old house we didn't do that much. We literally just sat around and and uh, relationships were formed. Whereas this one, very busy, full on. So many challenges that um, put your brain and your body on the line and uh, really pushed yourself to the limit, which is what's so cool about the Big Brother experience is that you find out that 
not only can you go as far as you possibly could imagine, but then you'll find something else to continue. Mm. And I was able to do that in so many of the challenges, you know, winning, winning a couple of the challenges and uh, doing them really, winning them really comfortably. But when it came to the game, when it came to the idea that it was coming up against my moral compass, it was going to come up against my belief system, I couldn't play anymore. And it's kind of like the feeling of coming out now is kind of like when you're on the rugby field and you just have that relief of being subbed out. You're like, oh, thank God I am buggered. I just need to go to the showers and I need a <laughs> long rest. Yeah, I do miss the interpersonal relationship side in this series, but it's got other benefits. Um, but in either version, you were an amazing player, mate. How do we help you do the great work you're doing? Is there a place we can go? Can we donate? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, what we do at Rough Track is we keep kids alive, we keep kids out of prison, and we skill them up for a secure future. And we've got to remember as Australians that we're all part of the village and a village has to raise the kids. We can't point at a problem and say someone should do something about that when we actually can. If you can give $5 or if you can give some time um, or if you can give give whatever you can give, just go to Rough Track, R-U-F-F-T-R-A-C-K-T-R-A. Fuck me, dead. You'll win. <laughs> no, you'll... it all stays in, mate. No, <laughs> um, all people need to do is go to uh, Rough Track. Dot com and that's r u double f t r a c k dot com and uh, if you're in Sydney, come to a trivia night, meet all the housemates, meet some maths guys on the 25th of June. But all the information of how to get involved with our organisation um, and really make sure that uh, we as a country uh, are no longer incarcerating kids because there is an alternative way, and that is to empower them and allow them to learn kindness and generosity and master skills so they can own their own future and be the authors of their own destiny. Me. So, yeah, roughtrack.com, get on there and get involved. I love that. Dave, I said about five questions ago I wasn't going to ask you another question, but you just <laughs> talked about kindness. And uh, I don't know if you're across the story of Rebel Wilson and being outed or uh, seemingly was going to be outed by the SMH. Um, yep. there's, it's become a very big story. Mm-hmm. Um so the back the background being that she was approached, um, told that they knew about her new relationship, they wanted to um, work with her on releasing the story. She put it out there on social media. The SMH column on Saturday um, complained about the fact of the way she didn't play by the rules. What's your take on all that? Because obviously there's a lot of backlash that people should never be outed. Yeah, I mean, people have the right when it comes to sexuality because of the the cultural issues we've come so far in australia let's yeah. let's not forget we've come so far in australia but there are still places in the world where you can be executed and and if you travel um that can be a big problem for you so we can't live in our australian perfect bubble where everyone's equal and we've got all the same rights and we don't uh, murder gay people anymore um and we don't sack them and we don't chuck them in jail but we've got to remember that we still live on a planet and information goes everywhere and you don't know people's journeys or where they're going to be Mm -hmm. going or doing so be kind and allow people to author their own stories, especially when it comes to sensitive topics like sexuality, because uh, it can be a very hard journey for people. And it's not like saying, oh, look, you know, they've got a new a new boyfriend. Um, when someone's sexuality is, is uh, the topic of discussion, we need to be mindful that um, there are a lot of issues because we still live in a world where, People don't have pride and, in fact, they have the opposite. And the reason we have pride and the reason that we have Mardi Gras are to empower people because so many people are locked in their own travesty, um, be it from religion or culture um, or just self-hatred, that that so many people still choose to kill themselves. So it's too much of a massive uh, issue to think that a newspaper or anyone has the right to to out someone it's just it's not on and it should be up to the person in their own time in their own way to uh give that part of themselves to the public which is i I completely agree with all of that it's interesting today that andrew hornery has come out and said he got it wrong um he 
He, he, he sees the error of what he did. He's taken the feedback on board. And I respect that. I think that we do have to be tolerant of people learning from their mistakes as well. Absolutely. And you've got to give people space to learn their mistakes. I mean, if you live in the bubble that is, um, you know, Western society, you think, well, what's, what's the big issue? But, you know, Western Sydney, it is a big issue in certain parts yes. of our is a big issue and we just need to always be mindful that we've got to look outside of our bubble sometimes and not just uh, rely on the echo chamber that sometimes we uh, find ourselves in in 2022. Mate, perfectly well said. What a great note to end it on. You are a lovely man. I really do adore you. Uh, and this is coming from a heterosexual male, but uh, <laughs> I've outed myself, Dave, but I am the campus straight man you'll ever meet. Um, but I love you very much. And I'm sorry you're not still in there. Um, we loved you. Thank you for all the great memories and, and everything you've done to make this series of Big Brother just one of the best ever. I genuinely do feel this is one of the best ever, if not the best. Thank you, mate. Isn't it, it's great TV, and, mm. and uh, I'm glad that uh, that it's 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 really cross-sectioning everyone. So please, say good day to your daughter for me. I will do. Uh, Jasmine will be very pleased. And Big Brother continues on Channel 7, uh, usually at 7.30, uh, early part of the week. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Rob. 